Okay, fellas, game two. Here we go. Alabama, UConn. It's been talked about, Matthew, time and time again. UConn, nine straight NCAA tournament wins by 13 plus points. We all saw what they did in the Elite Eight, a 30 to zero run against a very good Illinois team. UConn's crazy right now. They're number one in offense. They're number four in defense in Kempom. They are by far the best team. They're one of the best teams in Kempom's history right now. I think top five is where they currently sit. Alabama, though, they have a chance. They can shoot. They're a high variance team. Big number, 11 and a half, 12 out there at MGM. I believe it is 11 and a half currently. Matthew, who do you like right now? Uh, I'm crazy because I did take Alabama very small and emphasis on small because there's no proven reason to bet anything legitimate or large against this UConn freight train. Uh, but kind of some of the same points I mentioned with NC State, I think Bama is a little bit underrated in some of the possession tug of war stuff. They've been great on the glass all year. And I know it's sort of like, well, you're not going to rebound against Donovan Klingon, but with the amount of threes they shoot, their offensive rebounds are generally long offensive rebounds. So it's more of like scrambly type offensive rebounds that I think they can actually find in this game to at least give them enough shots to give them a chance to stay inside, you know, a few possessions here. Uh, I it, It's sitting at 12. I don't feel like it's going to go any higher than 12. It's, we saw some late UConn money the last round. I think 12 is at a point where it's just like gone so far that that there will be maybe some sharp, cute buyback. But but I don't think you're going to like, you know, if you want to bet UConn, bet it now or you missed your number. If you want to bet Alabama, um, you know, I, I don't think you can, you know, keep waiting, I guess, and and get like 13. It's eight on Ken Palm. Um, and I just think the matchups that they've had have, have probably been a little bit fortuitous as dominant as they've been. I don't know, Jim, the fact that UConn hasn't made any shots and they've been winning by a million points sort of concerns me, obviously. But um, Nate Oates is kind of my X factor here. I think he's going to look at the data and ignore his rigid blueprint of rim in three and make it more mid-rangey in three because you can't just go to bat with your basic game of a plan of attack against UConn. It's not going to work. Yeah, Illinois proved that. They, they hit their heads against the wall repeatedly and were 0 for 19 with Klingon as the primary defender. They just kept going at him and Underwood even talked about it in the in-game interview and it was like, dude, this isn't going to work. Stop it. Uh, so yeah, Matt, good luck to you, cutie Alabama backers. Thank you. you, you a little, I'll need it. And UConn, like Matt has mentioned, has not had a good shooting game and they continue to steamroll even yeah. outstanding teams. They've gotten up by 30 in every single NCAA tournament game so far they played. <laughs> uh, it's absolutely ludicrous. Yeah, I look at the thing that stands out most to you kind of me is their dominance in the, at the rim on both ends. Two point percentage, top five uh, on both sides of the floor. I know Alabama has a great offensive two point percentage. But that is strictly a shot selection thing to me. They don't take those mid-range jumpers. So the twos they do take are very high value. They are not high value against UConn. You can't really capture how intimidating and imposing Klingon is at the rim. He just takes everything away. And maybe there's a chance like you get a Pringle offensive rebound, he gets a foul. And uh, Estrada gets downhill and has an unconventional lefty finish that gives Klingon a second foul. But I wouldn't be super comfortable relying on that. And I think the UConn right. offense just cuts Alabama to ribbons. The The way they game plan every single time out is always so focused on attacking a specific thing. Like early Illinois, like we are going four out around Klingon and letting him daddy Coleman Hawkins in the paint. Uh, maybe that's what they do here against Pringle. I think it's going to be more the off-ball movement and, and all the, the screening action that they have. Kai, I just think we continue to see UConn steamroll teams, the offensive game plan plus the d- defense at the rim. Hurley's also smart with taking away the three. It's not something they actually give up that frequently. So I don't mm-hmm. think the Alabama looks would be that open. So yeah, I, I I think UConn wins going away once again. Yeah, Jim, real quick, just to the foul point. Uh, three fouls, Klingon committed against San Diego State. He had one last game and one against Northwestern. Like he had three against Jaden Ladee, who's the probably one of the biggest freak interior guys in the country. You're not going to see a guy like that until you play Zach Eady, which is, is looming, obviously. But in this matchup, I, the 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 odds of Klingon being in foul trouble are like next to none. So so don't try and do the Illinois thing. Like, be smart. Adjust. Yeah, I think they will. And another advantage for UConn, Matt mentioned the offensive glass for Alabama. Well, the offensive glass for UConn is a major, major advantage here. Top 15 in the country in offensive rebounding rate. Alabama's 272nd on, in defensive rebounding rate. That's a huge problem. I, I think Klingon's a problem. I do think UConn sets are a huge problem. Bama is a bit undisciplined at times on defense, and the the off-ball cutting and screening action, I, I think, is really going to slice and dice them. Uh, now, 
Can Bama shoot? Yes, they can. Again, I, I go back to my first point. High variance, top 20, three-point attempt rate, and 21st in three-point percentage. I agree with Jim. UConn's been really good defending the arc, but I do think Bama's going to get the shots up. Will they be fantastic looks every single time? Probably not. But they have talented shooters. Mark Sears has been excellent this tournament. He got to, got off to a slow start against Clemson, eventually found the range a bit. Uh, I... I, I think Bama can hit enough shots to hang. I, I say that very, very hesitantly. I just think 12 is a huge number. And again, maybe the transition is there for Alabama. Maybe they get a couple of easy buckets there. Although again, UConn's transition defense is so good. It, it really is tough to poke holes in UConn. You really can't. I think it's a matter of, hey, this spread has gotten way too high, the, the, the numbers. I don't think there's value taking UConn at 12. There might be a little bit on Alabama. Yeah, the, the the thing like people are pitching themselves in Alabama in terms of being high variance, like they can beat anybody on any given day. In the regular season, they were one and nine against top twenty five Ken Palm teams. Like the style didn't yeah. work right. being good teams. Uh, yeah, their only win teams, was though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Only only big win was at home against Auburn by four, and then they get the UNC one by two by the hair of their chinny chin chin on a superhuman Grant Nelson out of body performance. Uh, Clemson actually was a, a top. 25 win two and they got scorching hot in the second half that's the variance that's what you're hoping for mm -hmm. but that's what it takes against north carolina and clemson and you kind of did a completely different beast i just I kind of surrendered to the um onslaught that is the huskies at this point i think they continue doing that all the way to the title game monday night props what do you, you guys see any me? for uh, uh Gr Poo? maddie props grant nelson jaron stevenson right like stretch fives that can pull clinging away and, and just launch it. Um, I think they're going to have a healthy opportunity um, to, to just bombs away, whether it's if this game's closer, if it's like a complete garbage time runaway and you need, you need some guys to start launching it from distance to, to cut the margin. Uh, Stevenson was awesome last game. Nelson had his big out outburst. You could argue that they're even at a higher risk to get in foul trouble against Clayton because they have no chance one-on-one -on -one at the post against him. Let's be honest. But again, I think Oates is going to get cute and try and play uh, you know, you know, chess first checkers with just an all five out shooting five shooters at all times. And Stevenson and Nelson are kind of the quasi stretch fives that they can deploy. So, um, yeah, I, yeah, I think Nelson Nelson's more readily available out there. Stevenson's more kind of a, a fringe guy who just kind of had his coming out party last game. But I think both of those overs are probably good luck for Bama. I'm excited for what Oates crafts up here. I he might just go total, hey, three, three is more than two. It's like, yeah, you're going to kill us in the post clean. Okay, Clean gets his, or we double hard. Either choice he makes, and we are going to spread you out with five and and try to make your life hell on the, on the other end of the floor. Oates is a very good coach. He knows analytics very well. He has a whole staff of analytics guys. I'm very curious to see what he does against UConn. Yeah, the the Grant Nelson prop at point five threes made. Matthew is mm, over yes, that's minus one thirty five. Love that. Um, you, you think he's going to attempt them. I know he's only making like 27% this year, but I, I can't see a world where he doesn't take at least three or four just because of the matchup and what's going to be available. Uh, and at that point, okay, I I'll, guess I'll take my chances on that percentage. Um, assist numbers two for Alabama, I think will be decently high because I don't think they're going to go ISO ball against this defense. It's going to be a lot of yeah. perimeter ball movement. Um, so Estrada or Sears, their numbers are four and a half. Estrada, I think I like a little more, but it's juiced more to the over. Uh, I don't mind that. And then rebound numbers, guys, I, Klingon's nine and a half. I think he should be on the floor plenty. He might get six offensive rebounds. Yeah. So Kai, I think I do like a potential double-double for Klingon. I think he's also heard a lot of the chirp about like, oh, you're in worse shape than Zach Eady. He, he <laughs> wants to play more than 18 minutes. I think he's going to be out there for 25, which would certainly help his rebounding. Yeah, I'd, I'd kind of peek at... UConn's assist assist numbers as well. Spencer Newton and Castle each had five assists against Illinois. They played through Klingon. It seems like they probably will play through Klingon again. High focus on getting him the ball, racking up the assist numbers a bit. Um, it is spread out. It was spread out last game, but maybe target a Spencer or a or a Newton assist total, depending what's out there. Yeah, no, no, no Pringle points for Ben MGM, but that's one under. I like. I think he had his monster game against. Clemson inside, and I just I don't envision that happening against UConn.